Ansel Adams, at one with the power of the American landscape and renowned for the patient skill and timeless beauty of his work, photographer Ansel Adams has been visionary in his efforts to preserve this country's wild and scenic areas, both on film and on earth. Drawn to the beauty of nature's monuments, he is regarded by environmentalists as a monument himself and by photographers as a national institution. It is through his foresight and fortitude that so much of America has been saved for future Americans. all these books we're gonna look for some images and then we're gonna go on a journey we're gonna hit the road in California and seek out some of these locations that Ansel shot so many of the photographs that are in this book he went everywhere working all the time he had to carry all these extra supplies because it was really really bad if he got stuck out there in the desert sure. you'll see a picture of the old station wagon that he had and it was a real rattle trap and he had, yeah. a, he had a, a platform built on the roof so he could get a better uh, angle on the photographs, get up above the ground. It is really exciting for me, to, the thought of getting in a car with the crew and some cameras and with some very well-known professionals and just getting out there because anything can happen. Ansel was all about light and photography, as he saw it, was all about light. And you were trying to capture this you know, evanescent material. And Death Valley, uh, for example, was a magical place with the light, Be particularly as you went through the day. Ansel always started working at dawn or before dawn. We'll be up early. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're lucky on this trip, we'll go to some of these places inspired by Ansel's photograph, but we'll be inspired in our own way. Sure. And we'll make different pictures. His heart was in the Sierra, in the mountains, in the desert, in Death Valley. And so you're really going to be going into Ansel land in the truest sense of the word. But eventually we'll leave Death Valley on one of these great paved roads and where will we go? We're just gonna follow the light. Wherever the light leads us, that's where we're heading. Excellent. Yesterday morning we all left Los Angeles in a fleet of Lexus SUVs. We headed north on Highway 14 towards Death Valley. When I first heard about this project, I was really excited. It takes two of my favorite things, automotive photography and landscape photography, and melds them together in a neat partnership with Lexus and Ansel Adams. Ansel Adams was a perfectionist, and he was an innovator. The same thing could be said about Lexus and the way they build cars. We had to wake up really early, well before the sun came up, because the Brisky Point is a sunrise location. We loaded up the Lexus SUVs, filled them with as much gear as possible, and drove them just a few miles up the road. John and I parked the GX, we grabbed our gear, and we hiked up the hill to where Ansel made some of his famous photographs. All these places are special parts in the park that Ansel shot photos in that ultimately became iconic parts of the park, no doubt because of those photos. Ansel made a photograph that is very inspiring right here behind us at Zabriskie Point. I suspect that someone that isn't experienced in the desert might arrive here and say, there's just a lot of dirt and mud hills here. But if you look beneath the surface, the way the light caresses, reveals the subtle contours of this place is unlike anything I've ever seen on the planet. So we are in 20 Mill Canyon, just uh, putting along here in the black GX. The ride is quite comfortable. Very and comfortable. It's a nice little vehicle yeah. to be in, uh, to go through a place like this, for sure. You know, everybody thinks that 4x4 is to get up things, but many times the greater challenge is getting down smooth and safe without cooking the brakes. Yeah. And this really makes it easy.
So we're ending day one. Uh, we're in Badwater Basin right now. I really enjoy being in Death Valley because I think it's, it, it's the peacefulness, it's the vastness. For the most part, you're all by yourself. You can make great photography, or at least attempt to. Not the greatest light for this afternoon to do any photographs. Well, I think the light is uh, its just a, a little soft. I wish we had just a different, more directional light. And uh, we might have beautiful light as the, the sun sets here. You never know. Sometimes the sun can sneak underneath the clouds and go on fire. We'll just have to see. But I like to say a bad day of photography is better than a good day of most anything. Well, we're in a change of landscape, Brian. We yeah, left we Death Valley this morning. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the Owens Valley, just below the Eastern Sierra Escarpment. Mount Whitney off to the left yeah. there, and the highest point in the continental United States. Mm -hmm. We're near uh, Manzanar National Historic Site, and we're on our way to uh, find where Ansel made one of his iconic images of Mount Williamson. You can see how these, this boulder field yeah. is growing as we're getting further toward the Sierra. Pieces of these massive mountains that have washed down over the eons. And uh, of course, that's what Ansel used for the foreground in that uh, dramatic photograph. This looks like the place. Yeah, I think so. Oh. Here they are. That's so cool. It's, um, I can't even believe I'm staring at it, though, because it's a photo that I've looked at for so many years on walls and in museums, and now it's with, unmistakably, this is the location. Things in nature, small or large, were transcendentally important to him, and he ennobled them in his work, and he felt that they ennobled him. He came alive when he was in nature, when he was outside, when he was being out, getting out, going to places like Grand Canyon and Death Valley and uh, Redwoods in Northern California and the, and the Big Sur Coast, and it was his home place. We are here at the end of the day at Manzanar, uh, at the foot of the Sierra Nevadas. And one of the neat things about this location is people who come here to visit leave a thank you to Ansel in this ammo box. They leave their business cards or a picture or a little note. So the crew, we decided to do the same thing. So we've all signed this piece of paper and we're gonna leave our thank you to Ansel for inspiring us to come here. So he came out here for four days, didn't get much, and then on the fifth day. He and Virginia uh, drive the short distance here to Lone Pine for four days in a row, yeah. and the, it's just not a cooperative situation. So on this day, when he makes this legendary image, he's uh, here, he's got the car platform, yeah. just like you've got on the Lexus yeah. there, ready to go. As the last shaft of light it was illuminating that foreground, the horse, which had, had its hind end towards the camera, yeah. turns in profile, he makes the photograph. I think Ansel had this very, very deep kind of visceral or perhaps mystical relationship to the American land. And he, he loved the wilderness above everything else. One of the remarkable things about so many of these photographs is that they're still exactly the same way. You could literally go and make the same photograph. A lot of places in the US and almost no places in Europe could you do that. John, that was a long drive last night, but we are here. We have made it and uh, we are lucky again. Yeah, beautiful weather. Some clouds back there and look at fresh snow all over the place. Let's try and make some photographs inspired by this image on the cover of Ansel's Yosemite yeah. book here. Clearing winter storm, made in 1937 or 38. Uh -huh. Early December, uh, on a day not unlike today. There's a feeling you get when you get into Yosemite that's very emotional, it's very deep, and it puts you in another place. It kind of makes you forget about it, all your other worries. And it's really special to end this trip here. Although the other locations we were at were 
incredibly beautiful, Yosemite is that extra special place. That's El Capitan, the largest granite monolith on the planet. Yeah. And this is where Ansel loved to photograph that subject. These are some beauties. Early morning, just like right now, different time of year, great light. And you can see how the trees have changed over the 60 years. Yeah, they're much taller. Amazing. And Yosemite was, I think, the place he was most in love with. It was almost like his church, his, his grand cathedral. He just related to it at a very deep, visceral level. I mean, after all, it's one of the grandest places in the whole yeah. world. Yeah. Ansel Adams, as we know, is forever linked to Yosemite National Park, but it was through Ansel's photographs, Ansel's talks, Ansel's passion for Yosemite and conservation that to this day really impact the park. I don't think that the, the essence and the spirit of those places were captured any better by any other photographer than Ansel Adams. This whole project was about um, being inspired by Ansel's work and we want people to, to get away from their everyday life and go out and see these places. Everything looks beautiful. You look here, you look that direction, and it's it's just incredible light everywhere and amazing landscapes. And I can totally see why Ansel would have wanted to come here, and I can totally see why it's such an important thing to preserve after having been here and seen it. If you've never been in nature before, or if you've never been environmentalist, if you come out here, it'll change your thoughts. And this whole place in Yosemite is just Everything is dynamic, everything is changing. It's just very, very inspiring. And the fact that Lexus took us there and we had no issues, we can get into pretty remote places. We were able to just move fast and grab the, the moments that we needed to grab with the setting sun, we could just chase down that shot. It's been really, really spectacular this whole trip. Yosemite is an awe-inspiring place. We're surrounded by 3,000-foot granite cliffs. And I can't think of a better place to end this expedition, a place that was so instrumental in Ansel's life, in his photography, and such a rich part of the legacy that he leaves behind, not only in his images, but in his concern for preserving the environment, the planet, for future generations. Hopefully, Brian and I both got some good photographs and I think everyone on the crew has some great memories they'll never forget.